Hey guys, today we're going to take a look at The Lord of the Rings The Battle for Middle-earth. One of the uh, surprisingly many games that EA uh, produced at the time based on The Lord of the Rings films that was fantastic. Uh, it's honestly surprising how good EA was getting at doing Lord of the Rings games at the time. And uh, it's a shame that titles like The White Council never really came to fruition, but... Anyway, so this was the uh, Lord of the Rings... I believe it was Lord of the Rings first strategy game. I, I don't... I can't really remember if War of the Ring came first or not, but uh, this game was infinitely superior to War of the Ring. Um, so we've got a little sticker down here, first of all, which actually says Official Product of Lord of the Rings Movie Trilogy. Looks pretty nice. Uh, we've got the M15 Plus uh, thing for Australia, of course. Uh, the EA Games logo, and this incredible, incredible spread of uh, the armies of men and the armies of... Mordor fighting out again uh, in front of Minas Tirith on the uh, what Pelennor Fields, so uh, yeah, it's a pretty fantastic looking front cover and very eye catching. Uh, at the time, I actually didn't know anything about this game. Uh, I just saw the front cover and decided, well, that looks fantastic, so let's get it. Now, um, uh, as it was an uh, yeah one of the older PS uh, well PC games rather, we have uh, this fantastic you know opening up of the front cover, uh, something I, I desperately miss on modern PC games, or at least some modern PC games. But uh, So we get this great map of Middle-earth, as you can see, and we get different shots of uh, you know, some of the coolest stuff in the game. Ents and Balrogs and you know, all that good stuff, Nazgul's. There's a battle of uh, Helm's Deep, which I think for anyone that's played the uh, Battle for Middle-earth campaign, uh, would probably recall that as one well, of the most titular moments in the game. You actually had to survive 40 minutes <laughs> against the armies of Isengard. So, uh, and that, that was just it. You were just told, survive for 40 minutes and that's it. So, uh, you know, it, it was definitely a very intense mission. On the side, we just kind of continue this same image, and it looks pretty good. And uh, then on the back, we've got some more great shots. We've got all the uh, Mumakai over there, you know, just trashing these, uh, you know, men of Gondor in front of Minas Tirith, and, you know, we've got the Nazgul up there flying over some, uh, you know, other soldiers, uh, I believe, yeah, Gondorian soldiers. I think that's Gandalf at the front there. Uh, you know, just lots of great Lord of the Rings shots, and showing off the sheer size and scale of the game, uh, which, you know, really at the time was fantastic. But uh, anyway, so we say goodbye to that box, and we find ourselves with another box. Um, that was a common thing at the time, I do recall, but uh, basically you've got the cardboard box on the outside, and then you've got this more you know, plastic box in the, on the inside, which actually has the game discs. And, um, you know, it's pretty much the same all around, but inside we have our game discs. So we've got one showing Isengard, that's disc one. Uh, then we have Mordor, which is disc 2. I should say that these are, of course, CDs, not DVDs. Uh, so that's why there were so many. We've got, uh, then we've got Nis Tirith there, and then we've got Rohan there. So it all looks very, very nice. Aside from that, we have our manual, which uh, is entirely black and white, but it actually is pretty thick. Uh, it covers Pretty much everything you'd need to know in the game. It covers every unit and building and everything like that. Uh, this kind of manual was pretty common for strategy games at the time. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> Not really much uh, point going through it, but if you want to learn about the game, that is a good way to do it. I do recall actually reading through the entire manual at the time. So, anyway. The only other thing I've got in this uh, little box is actually my... Lord of the Rings Battle for Middle Earth 2 Beta Code. Uh, I honestly can't remember if I've showed this off or not, but it's a little pamphlet that I got with uh, when I pre-ordered Battle for Middle Earth 2, and of course at the time I didn't have any box for Battle for Middle Earth 2, so I just stuck it in my uh, Battle for Middle Earth 1 case. So uh, yeah, you got a passport to the beta test program. And uh, Battle for Middle Earth 2, while being very similar in some ways, was actually quite a different beast from Battle for Middle Earth 1. Um, I don't really like it more or less than the first game. I, I kind of just like them both for different reasons. Um, so I, I definitely think, you know, I wouldn't just skip necessarily to Battle for Middle-Earth 2. I would probably get both and play through both. Um, because they, they are different and they are both a ton of fun. 
but yeah. So anyway, that has been your look at Lord of the Rings The Battle for Middle-earth on the PC. Uh, sadly, the online servers actually got uh, shut down on both Battle for Middle-earth 1 and 2 uh, by EA. Uh, I think it was a couple of years ago now. So the only way you can really play with friends and that sort of thing is to use Hamachi. But, uh, you know, it's it, the campaign is still fantastic and you can still do skirmishes and all that. So I definitely recommend that if you haven't played this title, it is worth tracking down. So thanks a lot for watching guys, and I will see you later.